Hello, this is Denise with Pearls on Tuesday, and I have been asked to share a reading of the book I published in 2010 called The Lion and the Coconut. I did share this book as a reading on my podcast, Pearls on Tuesday, located on Spotify, Google, and Apple, but there were many people that were interested in seeing these beautiful illustrations, which are originals by Shauna Baird, a friend and colleague of mine. So I'm going to do my best to read the book and focus on her beautiful illustrations. The Lion and the Coconut introduces young children to choice theory and reality therapy. Written in an imaginative, creative style, children will learn how Lion fails to get what he wants because he chooses ineffective behaviors. With the help of his jungle friends, Lion learns, as will the children, that almost all behavior is a choice. And the only behavior we can control is our own. Lion discovers that what he is doing and thinking are directly related to how he will feel, which is total behavior. He begins to make a plan to bring him closer to his quality world picture, which is the coconut, and to satisfy his genetically encoded needs of survival, love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. He finally learns to meet his needs by choosing responsible behaviors that do not keep others from having their own needs met and finding happiness. Lion vows to begin to replace his disconnecting habits with caring habits, which will improve the quality of his life and enhance all of his relationships. This book can be purchased on Amazon. And so we begin. It was a beautiful morning in the jungle of choice. Lion was just waking up from a long, peaceful sleep and was ready to begin his day. He sat up slowly and stretched each front paw as far as it could reach. Next, he did the same with each back foot. He rolled his huge head from side to side, loosening up his furry neck. And then he let out a tremendous yawn. Now it was time for his daily walk around the entire jungle kingdom. You see, Lion was the king of the jungle and he ruled his jungle home. Each morning, Lion carefully covered every inch of the jungle. His sharp eyes and ears never missed a thing. Lion truly believed that he had it all under control. After walking for some time, Lion began to feel hungry. He decided to search for a snack to enjoy before taking his morning nap on a big rock in the sun. Lion loved the way the sun felt on his skin and how the firm rock touched his strong muscles. In no time at all, Lion spotted the perfect snack hanging at the top of a nearby tree. Just then, Parrot flew in and came to rest in a tree close to the one where the coconut grew. Just as Parrot was getting comfortable, a terrible roar sounded in his ears and he felt a strong thud which shook the trunk of the tree and all of its branches. Parrot looked down to see Lion standing high on his hind legs, 
kicking the tree with his big furry feet. Lion did not look happy. What's going on down there, squawked Parrot. Lion, Lion answered, this tree is making me angry. Now, parrots are pretty smart, and this one was no exception. He knew that a tree cannot make anyone angry. In a calm, kind voice, Parrot said, Dear Lion, the tree is not making you angry. You are choosing to be angry. What kind of nonsense is that, asked Lion sarcastically. Why, I ought to... But by this time, Parrot was gone. His wings were a blessing because they gave him the freedom to fly away at any moment. And this made Parrot very happy. A few moments later, Snake came slithering by. She was just in time to see Lion furiously shaking the tree with both front paws and shouting at the top of his lungs. Is something wrong? asked Snake as she curled around the trunk of the tree. Once again, Lion answered, this tree is making me so angry. The clever Snake shook her head from side to side and said, no, no, Lion. Trees cannot make you angry. You are choosing to be angry. Why don't you choose something else? Snake's comment made Lion even more upset. He pounced at Snake, who quickly sped off into the tall grass of the jungle. Snake was an expert at making do with what she had to survive. Although she had no legs, she was able to use her long, thin body to move very quickly. Snake was hard to catch, and Lion was left on his own. It just so happened that Monkey had been hanging by his curly tail from a branch of the tree for some time. He loved living in the jungle because it was so much fun to swing from tree to tree and look at the world upside down. Just thinking about it made him giggle with pleasure. Monkey loved nothing more than to have fun. But after watching for a while, he knew that Lion was not having much fun. Monkey wondered if he could do something to help. But first, he needed to find out if Lion wanted his help. Monkey made his way down the tree, swinging from branch to branch until he was just a few feet above Lion's head. Well, hello, Lion, said Monkey. I can see that you're having a rough time. May I offer to help? Lion looked right into Monkey's eyes and said, How could a silly thing like you help a king like me? You see, Lion needed to feel powerful and important. And he made sure that all the animals of the jungle knew just how powerful he was. Very often, he chose words and actions that hurt others, but he didn't seem to care. Suddenly, Lion once again raised his fists and began to beat on the tree with all his might. The branches and leaves began to shake as if they were afraid. Monkey still wanted to help, but he knew that he had no control over Lion. Monkey knew that the only animal he could control was himself. Because he wanted to be friends with Lion, Monkey chose to show that he cared. He put a smile on his face and said in a quiet, gentle voice, I would be happy to help Lion if you change your mind. And then... Off he swung to the top of another tree. Lion usually did not miss a thing that happened in the jungle, but he had not noticed 
that Wise Owl had been listening and watching from his perch in a nearby tree. Wise Owl was sure that Lion had a reason for his anger, and he was sure that the tree was not the real problem. Wise Owl hoped to learn the real story. Excuse me, Lion, said Owl. I would like to have a chat with you if you have the time. Lion was leaning against the trunk of the tree. With both arms crossed over his chest, he had a mean scowl on his face and huge puffs of hot air were coming from his nostrils. Lion's heart was racing so fast that he could actually hear it beating in his ears. About what? snapped Lion in his grumpiest voice. Clearing his throat, Wise Owl answered, <clears throat> Actually, I would like to ask you a question. Go ahead, said Lion. It's a free jungle. Well, said Owl, I have been watching and listening for quite a while, and I believe that you have a picture in that huge head of yours of something you want. Do you know what that something might be? Of course there's something I want, shouted the disgusted lion. Why else would I be shouting, kicking, and pounding this tree? Do you think I'm crazy? No, said Wise Owl. I know you are not crazy. That is why I believe there is something you want, but you can't figure out how to get it. What would that something be? I'm hungry, blurted Lion. I need food to survive. I, I see a nice juicy coconut up in this tree and I can't reach it. I'm hungry and I'm mad, so I'm taking it out on the tree. I see, said Al softly. How is that working for you? Is all of that shouting, kicking, and pounding helping you to get the juicy coconut? For the first time in his entire life, Lion did not know what to say. The scowl on his face melted and he looked as if he were really thinking. Finally, Lion answered, No, I guess it is not working. I just don't know what else to do and I'm getting hungrier by the minute. Well, said Al, would you be willing to try something else? Something that may work better than getting angry at the tree? Like what? asked the confused lion. I'm getting too weak to climb and I can't jump that high. Wise Owl was quiet for a moment and then he asked Lion this question. Would you like to know what I do when I can't reach things I want? Certainly, said Lion. What do you do? Well, have you ever thought about asking for help? Do you know anyone who could reach up that high? Do you have a tall friend who may be willing to help you get that coconut? All at once, Lion was sorry that he was often mean and bossy with his friends. He did know of someone who could help, but would he? Lion realized that he had let his need for power get in the way of many important friendships. For a long time, he had been choosing behaviors that pushed his friends away instead of bringing them closer together. Lion hoped that it was not too late to make things better. When Lion looked up, Wise Owl was gone, but he knew what he needed to do. With his head hung low, Lion walked slowly into the wide open space of the jungle, looking for his old friend, Giraffe. He spotted Giraffe munching leaves from a cluster of trees at the edge of the jungle. Lion took a deep breath, crossed his toes for good luck, and walked on. Giraffe stopped chewing when he heard Lion's approaching footsteps. He still had leaves coming out of both sides of his mouth when Lion arrived.
looks like you're having a nice dinner, said the nervous lion. I am, answered Giraffe with a mouthful of leaves. As he chewed and swallowed the rest of his dinner, Giraffe looked deeply into Lion's eyes. Something seemed different. Lion, are you okay, asked Giraffe. You don't seem yourself today. I'm not, said Lion, his eyes cast to the ground. I just realized how awful I've been to so many of my jungle friends. Now I need help. But by why would anyone choose to help me? I've ruined everything with my bad habits. Giraffe stepped closer to Lion and lowered his long neck so that he could look into Lion's sad eyes. He was just in time to see a large tear roll down Lion's nose and splash on the jungle floor. It bothered Giraffe to see anyone upset and he truly wanted to help. Love and belonging were important to Giraffe and he felt best when he was able to show love to others. Would you like to change, asked Giraffe. I mean, would you like to get closer to your friends instead of pushing them away? More than anything, said Lion, looking up into Giraffe's kind face. But it's probably too late. It is never too late to make better choices, encouraged Giraffe. In fact, you can start this very minute. Instead of saying and doing things that make your friends turn away, start saying and doing things that make others want to stick around. As they walked toward the thick of the jungle, Giraffe continued to talk with Lion about getting rid of disconnecting habits like criticizing, blaming, and threatening, and replacing them with caring habits like listening, supporting, and encouraging. When they reached the tree where the juicy coconut hung, Lion said to Giraffe, you have helped me so much today, but would you be willing to do just one more thing? Sure, said Giraffe, what can I do? Pointing up to the top of the tree, Lion said, can you see that big juicy coconut near the top of this tree? I certainly do, said Giraffe. It's a beauty. Lion continued, well, I have not eaten all day long and I would love a bite of that coconut. I've been trying to get it, but the things I was doing did not help at all. Can you help me get the coconut? Before Lion had finished his sentence, Giraffe stretched his long neck up to the tip top of the tree and carefully placed the coconut between his lips. He carried it down to where Lion was standing and dropped it at his feet. Lion took a huge bite. He savored the sweet taste of the coconut and let the cool juice seep down his dry throat. Suddenly, Lion noticed a strange feeling warming his entire body. What is happening to me, said the wide-eyed lion. I've never felt like this before. That feeling is called happiness, said Giraffe. It is how you feel when everything is as it should be. I'm not sure I understand, said Lion. Well, said Giraffe, at this moment, your needs are pretty much met. You have something to eat so you know you will survive. You have a friend so you know that you are loved. And hopefully we will have fun together. You made a plan to solve your problem and to improve your relationships. There is power in achievement. Now you can enjoy the freedom of roaming around this beautiful jungle with a full stomach. All day long, you have been picturing what it would feel like to eat that coconut. You could hardly think about anything else. 
Now you have eaten the coconut and it was as good as you had pictured. Wow, said Lion, I like this feeling. From now on, I'm going to work hard to be happy. I will not do things that keep others from getting what they want, and I will choose caring words and actions. I will do and think in ways that bring on good feelings instead of being angry and bossy all of the time. Sounds like a plan, said Giraffe. A very good plan, said Wise Owl from his branch in the tree. Quality work, my friends. Choice theory is based on the work of Dr. William Glasser. I am certified in choice theory and reality therapy through the William Glasser Institute. Once again, The Lion and the Coconut by Denise Hernandez O'Connor can be found on Amazon. Take good care of you and yours.